Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Samantha Hildebrandt. I am a type one diabetic as of February 18th, 2021. So it's been about two and a half years since I've been a type one diabetic. And this past week, I went to my endocrinologist to get an A1C update. So on Thursday afternoon, I went and saw my endocrinologist. She is awesome. Her name is Dr. O'Day. So if you're looking for a good endocrinologist in Colorado, Denver area, she's great. And we really just went for a checkup. So I had nothing specific I wanted to talk to her about. We did kind of throw around the idea of me getting an Omnipod at my last endo visit, but I came to the conclusion that I would like to stay on MDI mostly just because I'm super comfortable with it and I don't want to be switching things up when I don't need to be. And so we decided I'm gonna stay on MDI at least for now for the next year or so. And then we wanted to just run some labs again, check my thyroid because I have hypothyroidism and also check my A1C results. So my results came back pretty quickly. I got them not even 24 hours later. It was maybe like 18 hours later. And I have my chart, which is the online tool that you can check your data, you know, all of the test results and that. And so I got an alert on my phone and I checked my test result for my A1C and it was 5.7. 5.7. I literally opened that and I almost started crying because I was so, I was so proud of myself that I was able to get a 5.7. If you're watching this and you're like, okay, well, what, I mean, what's normal? 5.6 and under is normal. And so I am literally 0.1 away from being a normal person with a working pancreas. Technically the range I'm in now is pre-diabetes, but obviously I have type one, so I don't have pre-diabetes. I have type one diabetes, but I am so proud of myself because I have worked so hard over the past year to really just manage my blood sugars better. And I wasn't that bad before. <laughs> my last A1C was 5.9. So it's not like it was bad before by any means, but I really just want to be the best that I can be. And especially after getting diagnosed with type one diabetes and having all that crap last summer with my gluten free now and being tested for celiac. And I've just had a lot going on health wise and my leg cramps and everything. And I'm like, I can't ha be having these problems and I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Literally, I tried and I have been trying to just make better decisions when it came to my diabetes and it worked. So I, I wasn't necessarily surprised by the 5.7 because I absolutely worked my butt off to get that number. But I was so ecstatic that it was 0.2 less than it was last time. And I don't know, like, I, it's so exciting to me because I'm not making drastic changes where I'm miserable and like my mental health is bad and I'm, you know, not enjoying my life because that's not the case either. Like I'm enjoying my life and I'm loving my life right now. And I got a 5.7 and I'm sharing this because you can too. You can do it. Trust me. I mean, I'm no one special. I have a broken pancreas just like you. <laughs> so you can do it. And I know that the doctors say like under seven is great for type one diabetics, which is awesome. So if you're under seven, heck yeah, that's amazing. But we can do better. Like I'm proof we can do better than under seven. You can do under six. Like you can absolutely do it and you can be a healthy person living with type one diabetes. A couple of days ago, I posted my number, my A1C result on Instagram and I probably got 30 messages on Instagram. I had so many people asking me, how did you get that number? Like, I don't understand. How did you get 5.7? And so I wanted to take this time on this video today to really share what I've done over the past year that I got this result. So for starters, I am on MDI. So take this with a grain of salt because I know we all use different methods of managing our diabetes, which is amazing and great. And whatever works for you, wonderful. I'm not telling you to switch to MDI. A pump can absolutely control your blood sugars to a 5.7. But 
I want to let you know I am on MDI. So some things you might have to take differently depending on the situation you are in with your management. But first things first, I'm on MDI. I take my long lasting in the morning, which we actually just switched to Traceba, by the way. I was on Basiglar and now I have a different insurance. So she wanted me to try Traceba. So I'm trying that out to see how it goes. But then of course, you know, I take my Humalog, my fast acting insulin before food throughout the day. So that is how MDI works. And because I'm on MDI, you know, there's certain things I have to do differently than somebody on a pump. One of the main things that I really think helped me get to a 5.7 number, one is just working out twice per day or maybe even three times per day. So I work out every single day, every single day. I do not take breaks ever unless I absolutely have to for whatever reason. So I work out every single day. And if you've seen my day in the life videos, you know that because I always wake up and work out. That is my, the first thing I do every single morning, whether that's going for a run outside or if I lift in our gym, <laughs> we have a gym in our garage. And so I'll go in there and do a little lift workout with my legs or my arms or something. And I always do that in the morning. I rotate back and forth. So actually Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, I run. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, I lift. And I keep that consistent, mostly just for motivation and inspiration. And if I know, okay, it's Tuesday, I have to go lift. Like it's just easier for me to work out once I know that schedule. And then I always do a second workout later in the day after work usually. It's usually a walk. I love to walk. I am a big walker. I've always been a big walker, mostly because it actually relaxes me. So if I'm stressed from work all day, like I need to go for a walk. I get that from my dad. He does the same thing. I have to go for a walk. And I usually walk at least one mile, if not two miles in the afternoon. So I do that every single day. And I walk my dog and I love it because it's bonding time with me and Ralphie. And so it's it's wonderful. But I'm telling you, this has done wonders for my blood sugars because I know if I have like a high carb lunch, I know that I'm going to be walking later and it's going to help bring my high blood sugar back down. So it's really, really important to work out during the day. I'm not saying you have to do two, but I just want to share with you what I'm doing to help manage my blood sugars to get to that 5.7 number. So I do a harder workout in the morning, a run or a lift, and that's at like 5.30 a.m., and then I do a longer walk in the afternoon. Movement is perfect for blood sugars. Our blood sugars want us to move, okay? So if you have a high blood sugar, just go move, do something. It doesn't have to be a run. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a walk. It can be anything, any type of movement, a swim, a bike, anything. It will help your blood sugar stay in the range that we want it to stay. So that is the first tip. Move, work out multiple times per day if you can. And it doesn't have to be a hard workout. Like I said, it can literally be a walk around the block or two. <laughs> it does not have to be crazy. So just make sure to move throughout the day. If you work at a laptop like I do, get up and walk around, okay? Because I know when you're busy, it's four hours later, you realize you literally haven't moved for four hours. That's not great for our blood sugar. So go walk for 10 minutes in between meetings. Go walk 20 minutes at lunch. Like do whatever it is you got to do to move. It will do wonders on your diabetes management. The second tip I have for you, which it's really just to make healthier decisions when it comes to your body. So not just your pancreas, but try to make better decisions when it comes to your health. We already have an autoimmune disease, and I know a lot of us have several autoimmune diseases. Like I have like four now. <laughs> I don't know. I can't keep track anymore. And I know that I need to make better decisions. If you would have asked me five years ago what I ate, I wasn't unhealthy, but I also was not healthy. I would eat chips and pretzels and all these things that were not good for me all the time. And I didn't understand that it wasn't good for me. So that's important. I did not have a clue what was healthy, what was not. And I am learning more and more day by day what health means, what health means to me, what makes me feel good, doing swaps. So like, instead of eating this bag of chips, eat another bag of chips, that might be a better option for someone living with type one diabetes or just anybody in general. Thankfully, there are so many products coming out now that are just better options for us. Thank God to those people <laughs> that are creating these products because 
it's amazing. There's just better options out there now for us. I know 20 years ago, there weren't great healthy options for snacking. And I'm a big snacker, so I'm not giving up snacking. Never, ever, ever will I give up snacking. I'm just going to choose a better health option. So that is my tip number two, is think about it before you eat it. Okay, this bag of chips has no protein and it has no fiber. What will this do to my blood sugar in two hours? Well, if you're anything like me, that situation would not go well in two hours. I would be going straight up 220. I would be so upset with myself because now I have to go move and I got to leave whatever I was doing because my blood sugars are high. I don't feel good. And it's just the rolling effect. And then later on through the day, you know, it's just the blood sugar roller coaster. So instead of eating that bag of chips that has no protein and no fiber, choose the other bag of chips that does have protein and does have fiber because your blood sugars will be way better off and you will be way better off. You'll feel so much better. I could talk about this all day long because I am so happy that I have been finding this out lately because it's been saving my blood sugars, like literally saving my blood sugars. And this doesn't mean you have to eat keto, okay? So if you still want to eat that bag of chips, pair it with something with protein and something with fiber. I am all about those beef sticks nowadays like chomps is a brand there's so many different brands but larissa's is really good oh gosh yeah check them out we'll be adding them to the type one tribe website but go eat those with a bag of chips because it will once again help your blood sugars and eat the protein first before you eat the chips because that will also help and i am learning all of this by trial and error okay so i am not a nutritionist i am not a dietitian i didn't go to school for that i am just learning because i see it happen on my dexcom and i'm like okay this is not okay like i gotta fix this situation next time and so i am making healthier decisions for my blood sugars, for my body, and you should too, especially because we have so much access right now to better healthy options. And I know it's expensive. Don't get me wrong. I want to cry sometimes when I go to the grocery store and I'm like, okay, this bag of chips is $1 and this one's 10. Well, guess what? That extra $9 will be so worth it when your blood sugar is controlled. So that is my second tip. So second tip, make healthier food decisions. I am not one to tell you to give up snacks. I'm not telling you to give up anything. I'm just saying swap for a different, better snack. Your blood sugars will be rocking. My third tip kind of goes back to the first one of working out. But if my blood sugar goes high, it starts going high, I always get up and move. I don't care what I'm doing. I do not care. I will get up and move. And some may say this is not healthy to manage my diabetes, like mental health, because I do freak out if I go above 180. I am freaking out because I don't want to go above 180. That's not good for me. It's not good for my body. I know it's hard to control, but I am going to do something about it. Really, the third tip is like correct immediately and then move on with your day. But correction will be either, you know, giving yourself a little bit more insulin or going for a walk or chugging water, whatever it is that you got to do, do it right then. Don't put it off. Why are you putting it off? Like, just do it. And if it's like a work issue, you know, your boss is being rude. Well, screw them. In my opinion, I'm sorry. They don't have type one diabetes. I don't care. Go do what you got to do. It's your body. It's your health. You got to make the right decisions now to help later on in life. I know I'm self-employed and so I know I'm blessed in that area where I can get up in the middle of the day and just walk around and I don't have a boss yelling at me. And so don't get me wrong, I know that I have it easier in that sense, but I also think who cares? Just tell your boss, sorry, my blood sugar's high, I have to go walk for 20 minutes. If that person's mean about it, well then say screw you. That is my opinion. I just think if you go for a walk, it's magical with blood sugars. Once again, it brings you right back down. Not always. I know the heat affects our blood sugars and certain instances affect our blood sugars. But if you take a little bit of insulin and then go for a walk, your blood sugar might go up a little bit, right? Because of the start of the walk, but then it will come back down. Okay. So try that out next time your blood sugar is high. And we have different ranges. 180 for me is high, but maybe 220 is high for you. So take this with a grain of salt, like I said, and figure that out. Correct immediately and then move on. Anyway, I hope that helps because I want to share how I got that number. I don't want to just tell everybody I got a 5.7 and rub it in anybody's faces because that is not my goal here by any means. I just want to show you that it's possible. Like you can absolutely get a 5.7. It might be a huge life change for you to get a 5.7, but I'm telling you, it will be a better life change. You will feel way better throughout the day, all the time. You'll be eating healthier. 
other parts of your body will feel great. You're just going to feel better. So why wouldn't you do that? And I know it's hard. Once again, I know it's hard. Trust me, there are days when I'm like, I just want to eat a bag of chips. <laughs> and then I say no, Samantha, because you're going to be even more mad later when your blood sugar is 240, right? So I hope that this helped. I hope that you could make some small changes that will help bring your A1C down. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. I will see you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.